Okay, we're on. Morning, everybody. This is Bo from Bo Not Broken, and I am here at Utah, Utah, not Utah County, but Utah State Republican Party room headquarters. And I've got a special couple here with me today, and I I want them to relax. This is, as you know, but well, you may not know, Bo Not Broken is all about allowing people to tell their stories or a little bit about their stories. Um, and I'm sure you guys aren't without challenges and all the things that happen in your life but when I look at you two I look at it I look at this you know power couple is probably the best word and um, you know who knows someday this guy may be the president I don't know the governor the president but I wanted I, I wanted to, to interview you guys because all the all the good looks all the good looks behind that um, I wanted I, I kind of wanted everyone or anyone that's that's watching or listen or listening um you've had your challenges in your life it's not you became the utah chair of the republican party like bingo right. you've been in the military you're i mean you've had many challenges same thing with you this is uh this is not this this is, is this a second marriage for both of you yeah. second marriage and so i kind of just wanted to be human and wanted to ask um you know a lot of people look to other people for advice or some of the similar things that they go through in their lives and they can identify with them and it kind of brings them out of maybe a depression or a you know something that they're they're going through we all have challenges uh, my first question would be for both of you you know one at a time would be is there a not to be too, I don't want you to go way private I just something that comes to mind is there something in your life that was maybe a change maybe a change agent to a, to a certain extent that happened to you in your life that really kind of puts you back on track again. And I'm sure it's happened many times, but is there one significant occurrence that, that you can think of? Who's gonna go first with you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's always more, more, more uh, correct in everything she says. Uh -huh. That's interesting, so yes, okay, well, I'll go first, I guess. Yeah, okay. Good, good. Do you, do you I'm just doing enough to make sure, but go ahead. How we've Met That'd be great. Together. That'd be great. Well, Rob and I, it's interesting. Um, I think our upbringings are fairly similar, even though we grew up on completely opposite sides of the country. Oh, okay. I grew up, I was born in Florida, but I was raised in Virginia, very rural Virginia. Right. People think the Washington, D.C., metropolitan, metropolitan area. But I grew up south of Roanoke, Virginia, so southwestern Virginia. And uh, even Roanoke itself is not a large area but my dad felt that that was still too urban for us so he moved us to a little isn't that a shipbuilding no, area no you're it's not the coast oh okay. i'm way okay. inland close oh. to north carolina and tennessee okay so the Ridge Mountains. this is the state of virginia all the way down here oh okay, okay. all right so um my father moved us onto a, a farm and decided he wanted to do cattle and things as a hobby right and then he traveled for a living as a dog representative and then rob grew up on a cattle mm -hmm. ranch in Wyoming. Aspen, Wyoming. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Wow. So our paths never would have crossed right. Right. growing up. Uh, so he graduated from Wyoming State University and went to Okay, well that's the that's the that's the best story I've heard from Matt. <laughs> but I don't know how other people are, but there's I probably live within a, maybe a five mile radius right. from my house. So right. if you don't go to if I don't if, yeah if you don't have a kid at my kid's school or you don't go to my church or shop at right. the grocery store, right. I'm probably not gonna yeah. Yeah. ever meet. Same you. old man just just yeah. traveling around. So right. that's how we met. He contacted me. Wow, good for him. That's good. Traditional. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's interesting. You know, you, back to your original question. So is there a moment where I kind of snap back on track? And, and uh, you know, I think the first big trial that if, if you've been divorced, you know, that's a huge, huge trial. And it, and it isn't about you or your spouse. 
technology to help you today. And uh, trying to get them adjusted to being bored. And right. That's a huge thing. And that was probably my main focus, as well as, you know, when you, when you start taking a house and you divide it into two houses and you try to, to maintain, you know, a similar standard of living, and, and you're financially strapped as well. And right. So I found myself working 29 to 30 days a month with two jobs to, to, to make ends meet. Right. And uh, so growing up on a farm, I was used to working every day. It was just that we had dairy, and then we also had a, a, a cattle ranch. And so, you know, it wasn't abnormal to me, but uh, it was unfortunate that uh, I had to work that much. But uh, it goes to second chances. So I was divorced for quite a few years. We met on Match.com. We went on our first date. There was no farts. There was nothing. nothing. Oh, come and on. So, no. no. You guys are a wedding cake. Yeah. They're a wedding cake. We never thought we'd see each other. No, no. Really? And, and, I, and I, I was in the parking lot, and, and uh, you know, I'm driving the truck. She'd never dated a guy in a truck or, or <laughs> really looked her. So I'm in my truck, and, I, and, I, truck. and I'm texting. I'm, I send a text to her saying, hey, nice, nice lunch. Uh, thanks for meeting me. And she never gets it. I never got it. And, and oh. so I think, well, okay. That's it, you know, type thing. So I go home and you know, my kids are like, how did they go? And, and I'm like, I, I don't ever, I don't think I'll ever see her again. And I did the same thing to my kids. And, and so, they were like, and <laughs> that's awesome. And so, that's awesome. And so that <laughs> night, she had talked to me, like, pilot wow, stuff, fly around the country, and I'd spent a lot of time in yeah. New York City. I was getting ready to take my older son to New York on a mother son little trip because he was getting ready to leave for his mission to the Philippines. Right. It was late November, and I and I and I was just thinking after the kids had gotten into bed, and, and I and I'm sitting there alone. I go, you know, she needs to know that New York City is really, really November. cold in November. Mm -hmm. Humid and mm -hmm. cold. Mm -hmm. And so I sent her a text message that said, "Don't underestimate how cold it would be in New York, especially if you take the ferry out to to the statue or Ellis Island." Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm like, she's the nicest person, and it's just so thoughtful. That was like the second or third really thoughtful text she had sent me. Right. The first two were before the day. Right. And then that one came after the day, and I thought, old Kathleen wouldn't go out with him twice. Yeah. Let's look at old Kathleen's life and how it turned out to this point. So I made a very conscious decision that I was going to go out with him a second time simply for the fact that all of his communications with me had been really thoughtful. Positive. And considerate. No, yeah. Thoughtful. Interesting. And I thought that was a great trait. Mm -hmm. And um, I thought, no, if he asks me out again, I'm going to go. Mm -hmm. Even though I didn't think our first date was great, mm -hmm. I'll go mm -hmm. a second time. Interesting. And I did. Interesting. Now, after that time, it worked out the second date. Yeah, yeah. So, the interesting, the second date was actually, it was kind of funny. She had gotten divorced. Her dad insisted that she get a, a firearm to, to protect herself. That's so pretty she, common. She, yeah. went out, she went out and bought herself what. Uh, uh, some fathers probably wouldn't want their their 120 pound daughter to buy, which was a <laughs> snub nose 357. Man. Oh my god, <laughs> <laughs> 357. You know, he tried to talk me out of that. That was a four inch barrel, the two and a half inch barrel. You know, the snub nose really, <laughs> yeah, I mean, you really I get didn't a kick on that. I never thought of that <laughs> so, before. So she, oh she texts me no. and she says, Do you have firearms training? And, and of course, so military background, uh, yeah. uh, federal officer training for the airline, so I'm a federal flight deck officer. Oh, and, okay. Uh, I go, I have extensive fire. Sure. I'd love to take you out. You know, that thing. And so, uh, anyway, the second day was where... I said, well, I don't have any experience shooting this gun, if you wouldn't mind taking mm -hmm. out to do it. Mm -hmm. So he, I guess I sure, but he thinks I'm kidding, that I'm going to get there and be some sharpshooter. Did you keep the 357? We That's still where we it. still have it. Yeah, we put 38s in it. That'll take yeah. your wrist off. But his you only advice to me is if I ever have to shoot it to defend myself, he tells me to just aim well and hope that I'll hit the <laughs> 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 Aim well. Aim, aim the mass, right? <laughs> so, well, yeah, so, aim at their feet. Maybe so, I'll get center mass. <laughs> so she was nervous. She, we were at the range. She was nervous. And, and so I shot the first uh, uh, course there. And, and, and it was uh, indoor. Right. So and out. the guy so next to us was like his 44 Magnum, so he was sucking all the oxygen out of the room. Every <laughs> blast, you know? So, my so anyway, uh, yeah, and she, she said, but no, no, you shoot it. So I shot it, and then and I put the target like five feet out, you know, or ten feet. It was just really close. Right. Kind of thing. And, and uh, I'm, I'm behind her, and I'm like, okay, so what do you do, you know, type thing. And so I'm screaming over the noise of everybody else shooting. And uh, she kind of goes like this and closes her eyes and pulls the trigger. And I think if it hit the target, it was above his head. 
Oh, and no. so uh, and I, I looked at her and I go, "You really haven't shot a gun ever, have you?" And she goes, "No, I wasn't lying." Wow. <laughs> wow. So I said, "Aim low, and maybe I'll get a center of mass." <laughs> well, we all know it's good for a woman to know how to shoot a gun if they want to. That's obviously, that's the gun that I. You know. Yeah. You yeah. yeah. got me something of it. You can roll three eighty or something exactly for it. Exactly right. Huh? Good. Mm -hmm. Good. That's awesome. So. So love over, it wasn't really like the spark. Second then, Amendment, Second Amendment then, love. <laughs> yeah, Second Amendment love, and then, wow, that's great. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, I think I think a lot of it was, we spent a lot of time when she was in New York, and, and uh, she came back and I was on a trip, and, and uh, at the time I was, I was working in the guard flying F-15s, and so right. I, I was gone quite a bit, but we talked a lot on the phone. How long have you been out of the guard, and or how long have you been out of the military? How long have you guys oh, been married? Uh, five, about five years ago was, was last okay. time I flew, and I retired about four years ago. Wow, so really, so, that's rather recent. So, you I know, the, the, yeah, the recent, but the interesting thing was... Was it born to me? I thought it was the first year of our marriage. Uh, it Did was. Did married five and a half years? Well, years? we got married, and about a year later, I retired. And, uh, or I did my last flight. And uh, the cool thing was, we went out there one time, and she, she accompanied me. And uh, we were newly wed. And I show up in the squadron, and I, and I had a car out in Portland. That's where the F-15 was. And I show up, and it's employees aboard the Guard and Reserve Base. So there's oh. a bunch of employers out there. And so they have a tanker, uh, a KC-135 tank the employers up. So they want the F-15 free fuel and all that kind of stuff. And, and one of the guys, one of my buddies at the, the desk said, hey, is that your employer? And I go, yeah, right, whatever. And they go, do you want us to put her on the airplane? I go, that would be awesome. I don't want anybody to get in trouble, but if you want sure. to do that, that'd be great. Sure. So it, it goes beyond that. So she goes out there, and the crew of the um, guard unit in Spokane, the tanker crew, uh, they treated her with the red carpet. And so when you take off, we take off and do the afterburn take off straight up just so that it's Right. right. So they, they go back in the back of the plane and say, hey, come out here and watch your guys and stuff take off. And so she gets to watch that. And when you're out there, the, the, the thrill yeah. of the afterburners, I mean, it really oh, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Oh, I'm a And then we're all closet. flying, and now the F-15 took off our, the KC-135 wing. So we're all... Flying formation. And, yeah. and, and she, hey, he's on the right side, so she went to the portal and took some pictures because there's not a lot of windows on it. Right, right. And then the next thing I know, I go down to refuel, and, and lo and behold, the tanker, the boom operator, was yeah, sitting, was sitting in the jump seat, and she was in the boom oh, operator. Oh, how cool. With the headset on. Yeah. And oh, so really? she's talking to me. And Hi, hon. <laughs> exactly. What do you say? What do you say? Exactly. So Hi, hon. In front of everybody that has a radio that tunes to that frequency. Hey, honey, how are you? Love you. You know, Come in. And all of my buddies are erupting on the radio going, wow, tape's on. Let's record this. <laughs> That's awesome. And I'm like, hey, honey, how are you? And, 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 and I see her. I look through the window and I see her sitting there. I'm like, oh, my gosh, these guys are so cool. So she gets to refuel me and, and, uh, and, and then come back. And then... Uh, on the way back, they flew around the They put her in the cockpit and they flew around the mountain. I was in the cockpit. Wow. They flew around the mountain. They flew around the mountain. Wow. Yeah. Around that's, that's like jet porn and then, for some of us. And then they took her back and for landed for with her in the cockpit. Oh, that is. So. Yeah, but I get off the plane. I'm like, are they that early? <laughs> of course no. not, they don't. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it just reminds me of Tom Cruise and what's the what's the movie the the old movie they're redoing? So it was Top Gun. Top Gun, yeah. It was good for her to see that part of my life because it was such a huge part of my life. Right. I flew the airplane for 22 years straight, and, and it was wow. and it was huge, and, and uh, it was very hard for me to give up. Sure, sure, but and now you're doing the, the pilot thing still, but yeah, it's a little yeah, different, yeah. a little different, yeah. I imagine. So, uh, where do you want to go now? I mean, no, that, that, I thank you for sharing all that. <laughs> the, the, the real thing is I wanted to show you guys as, you know, humans, and, yeah. you know, I wanted to sh I want to show you guys that way. That's what Boat Not Broken is all about, and, you know, we don't have to talk a lot about politics, but we can for a second, I think. Um, you, you're coming in at a time when, here in Utah, when, I guess nas nationally and here in Utah, there's, there's really this party backlash, whether you're Republican or Democrat or whatever else. We're having all these other parties that are kind of popping up. Um, what do you see your biggest, you know, and, and you're very, you've been very active with the Republican women and all of that, and, and other people, not just women, 
But what I'm saying, you've been active in the party for a long time. Yeah, I've been doing it for about two decades. Yeah. He's been doing it for two or four months. Yeah. Okay. Well, and, and I think I think your appeal is is your background and your manner. You just it's a calming manner. What? But what do you see as you know some of the challenges that that yeah. here locally and maybe nationally that need to that well, we're facing? I guess. I think you know twenty years ago, uh, the one hot topic or the one button that you didn't dare transcend with people was the one true. Right. Uh, now it's become politics. That's the that's the one divisive issue out there. And it really doesn't need to be because you know, if you take a poll across the country, uh, seventy five percent of Americans collectively are just right of center. Right. You know, okay. Yeah. Which yeah. I think the the Republican Party might be just a little slightly right of that, but I think right. our message and our platform uh, is is the majority of Americans out there, and we see voter turnout rates in a lot of states and, and even Utah. Is very low, and so for me, voter engagement is the most important thing. And communication, so right. a lot of communication during the military, but it's uh, it's I think it's big, and that's that's where we are investing all of our time and energy here in the party since I've taken over is right. trying to get people to engage and, and uh, you know, the, the, the common buzzword is uh, disagree with each other. Right, so, right. It, it's you know, gotten can, so yeah, you know, wrong you know. says you know if you agree. <coughs> the best way to say it. You guys can influence. I, you know, it's, it's a, unfortunately, it's an epidemic that people out there, and I'm a three-time loser in, in politics, but it doesn't stop you from every once in a while getting involved in something, you know, a local election, or make sure I'm voting, or whatever. If you, if you totally give up, then you, you're never, it's never going to change. It, it really will be, yeah, they'll set the policy, and they'll do everything, and I'll just sit here and kind of take it. But there's you know? nobody at any level, in my opinion, that hasn't lost along the way. Yeah, yeah. And, and we reach in different ways. Right. Or it, it seems as a loss at the time. Right. But then with hindsight, and there's time and experience that you beyond that, what you perceive as a loss is actually a gain. Right, right. And you learn so much, mm -hmm. and no matter what you do, right. within political parties or right. whatever. How do you get the, How do you get those people out? 
you know, what's your strategy, I guess, you know, over the next, you know, you got what, four years, right? Two, two years, and then two years and, and hopefully I, a second term, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I'll do more than four. I, right now, I would like to, to, to run one at a time and, and make sure the changes that we make are solidified and, and are proper and then the second sum so that, that the success that we hopefully get will continue on with the right. administration. But and you kind of took over, I know that, not the grill in the room, but just one of the issues, you took over the party that you took over at a time when there was some issues financially, yeah. right? Yeah. And you're yeah. trying to clear those up. Yeah, and, and, and we still are, and we're trying to bring people who have been uh, generous and, and contributed to the party who left. And, and unfortunately, uh, I wasn't around when they left, and I couldn't, sure. uh, but, I, but I've reached out to a lot of people that, that, that uh, uh, well, uh, let's say it, that the, you know, the antithesis of the Republican Party or their is count my vote. I've actually mm -hmm. reached out to them and tried to, to invite them to everything we do mm -hmm. so that they can see what the, what the new leadership is doing. And uh, it's not worth the risk to go to mm -hmm. with each other. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and really our goals are the same. We want to find, recruit, and elect the best people out there to uh, run our state and our country. Mm -hmm. and, and when people complain about uh, you know, who we've elected, my first question is, did you have some two Right, right. Election? Right. Are you ready? If you, if you, if you, if you didn't, <laughs> right. uh, I go, you have no complaints. Right. It's true. It's, it really is true. Yeah. Nationally, what do you guys think? What do you think of nationally? Well, we have what's to going on? Let's talk about the other elephant in the room. Uh, Rob and I were both Trump supporters. Uh -huh. We don't find a lot of people in Utah who are. Mm -hmm. And we still admit it. That we did. We were. And we still are. Because we still right. the president. Right. Um, but all this chatter that you hear, it's like you said, and I and I spoke for a while to a to Professor Nate Hemsley, Professor at U, and he agreed with the question that that speaker or um, moderate maybe turned away. Right. And all this chatter that you hear tends to come from the far right, far left. Mm -hmm. And in my opinion, they come so it's a circle. Mm -hmm. And they're so closely aligned. Mm -hmm. It can be very nasty, and it's a turn off to anyone who I think has a normal view or, or, or just wants to just be a, a good person mm -hmm. and um, disagree about things that's disagreeable. And so nobody really jumps into a fray where you're going to be attacked verbally or worse physically. Right. And so most people stay away from it. Right. And so it's been interesting. Um, but having family that lives outside the state of Utah, for us, the Trump victory didn't come as a surprise. It didn't surprise a lot of people right. in Utah because he doesn't speak and act like a Utah. And no, no. And he's not. No. He's a, well, if you look at the South, he's a Yankee. And right. That's how we, I was raised to never be like that. <laughs> and we always want to be a little more genteel than that. Right. But that's kind of the New York way. They're a little bit more brusque and opinionated. And Different. He's different than any other and politician that's been around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, he's somebody, not a politician. Yeah, no, he's not. You know? That's true. Yeah, somebody was asking me about that the other day, and I go, you know, it's unfortunate that we're in a, in a situation where, uh, and, 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 and they were offering or er, asking about my thoughts on the solution. And I go, the, the, the solution isn't the presidential executive order. He executes what the legislative branch uh, enacts, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so there's a failure to function in the legislative branch. They, they've got to move on some issues. They've got to move on to immigration issues. They've got to come together, don't you think? They do. They, they, and they, they've, 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 got, got, they've, they've got to pass some laws that the president can enforce. And once that happens, solution, problem solved, we move forward as a country. Right. We're stronger. And so, uh, you know, there, there, there are those issues, and I think that's why it's so important when we elect somebody, they, they're affable, they're, they're, they're charismatic, and they're, they're strong, they're able to express their opinion in a way and, and compromise and, and, and take other people's views and, and considerations and go, I like
like that idea. If we merge that into this idea, I think we can come up with a better plan, mm -hmm. which is more acceptable to all. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as yeah. we do as, as well, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's a compromise right. that you're giving up something good for something worse. But the uh, whole foundation of it, of, of, of becoming a country, they fought so much behind closed doors to come up with the Constitution. There was a lot of give and take. And anyone who, who doubts that, pick up that book, Miracle in Philadelphia, where it talks about compromise sitting on George Washington. And so you've <laughs> got to be able to, to work and make decisions on the fly. And, and, and uh, you know, that's my background. That's not how we Military, athletics. I think athletics teaches us as well. We go fight it out, and then ding, ding, the bell or the you know the buzzer goes off, and we we're friends again. And we're you know I mean that's the problem. Yeah, I, I think I was at, a, at the RMC with, with Kathleen and, and a couple other staff uh, last. Like two weeks ago, so we're we're over at the RMC, and the, the chairman of all the chairs was a gentleman, a former congressman, Robin Hayes from North Carolina, and uh, we happened to meet and sit down before uh, one of the meetings, and we talked for almost an hour, and uh, it was Wade, he's a very religious man with with the Bible, and he talked about how the Bible is the you know it's, it's the glue that brings us together as a country across the spectrum. And uh, he uh, referenced and spoke in his, uh, his remarks that day about open hands versus clenched fists. <laughs> and uh, it's interesting because I go back to my youth and uh, I was a fighter. I got in fights while I was school. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, there were times in sports where you know, I'd get knocked on my butt in a football game and I would, I would get up and, and I would want to tear the guy's head off. Mm -hmm. and, and I would give no counsel for it. You know, mm -hmm. I think so. I'm just, I'm just telling you. Mm -hmm. And over time, I would learn that to channel that energy into the next play and get even by beating the other team. Mm -hmm. And so the same thing I think is involved in politics. Sports, when we recruited and hired people in the guard to fly F-15s, I thought that was very essential. What sport did they play in college? I want to know. Right. Is to, to be in that competitive are they coachable? Position. Are they coachable and are they someone that's going to use their energy in the right way? Man, that's right on what I, yeah. I, I think athletics and, you know, all that stuff right. is the, the key. And then age, too, has taught us that when you emotionally react, it's helpful to not think about it. sophomore year in high school, I had a basketball coach, and, and uh, you know, I, I, I 
felt like I was going to make the team. I knew, you know, I started, you know, to demonstrate grades freshman year. And uh, the first practice my sophomore year, the coach looked at me when I walked into the gym, and I think he said, we'll cover games my freshman year. Because I had one. And uh, he, I remember how he, looked at me, he looked at me and he goes, Anderson, stairs. <laughs> and I ran yeah. stairs the entire <laughs> practice. The entire practice. And then, you know, I said, okay, one, okay, I'll come back tomorrow and I'll do practice. The next day, I walked in the gym, Anderson, stairs. <laughs> I never even practiced. First week, I ran stairs the entire practice, the entire tryout. And, and uh, you know, I go to the, the, to the board thinking, will they make it or not, you know, type thing. And I remember the first day, I was so angry. I was so angry and bitter. And, and, and by the fourth day, it was like, you told me to run stairs, I'm going to run stairs. I'm going to do it. I'm going to make the team. And, and uh, that week, uh, I learned a lot. Well, well, well that's, that's an awesome let's, story. Let's get to the quiz. Oh, of course. Sure. Of course. And, yeah. and, and you know, it was, a, it was a trial. And the coach, you know, he didn't think he was obviously very coachable. Right. And if it was. But he had the talent. The coach right. knew he had the right. talent. And he knew that either he was going to do what the coach said, because he wanted to be on the team, or if he was finally able right. to quit. Right. Right. I could talk to you guys for hours. Um, <laughs> I just want to, uh, it's an honor to hang out with you guys for a few minutes. I really, honestly, I appreciate you having me here. You know, but we um, want more people involved. So if yeah. there's anyone who's watching and who wants we to involved. We will, we will. And I'm going to YouTube this. And, you know, I have got a decent audience out there. And over yeah. time, they'll watch it and go back and look right. at it. Yeah, any parting words? How do we, how do we get people involved? I mean, and it's... <clears throat> We'd love it, you'd you love it to be a Republican side or any side, but just get people involved. Right. Any final words on, you know, motivating them to, to get involved? We said Republican or, or Democrat. I just uh, was emailing uh, Daisy Thomas, the chair of the Democratic Party, and we were coordinating uh, for caucus night next year. And uh, I told her, I go, let's sit down and, and discuss things and figure out how we can help each other and how I can help you. Sure. And so it's not like I'm, I'm fighting against you right. or trying to uh, occupy all the facilities. If, if they choose to hold their night the same night, uh, you know, we want to coordinate and work together and make sure right. that uh, get some people out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's awesome. Uh, you guys moved quick on that. Did, on both of them, we actually. Moved quickly on those. And so there are so many areas <clears throat> where we can come together and should rather than always looking to, for things that divide us. And so I think people appreciate that too. And, um, we're trying to get our message out there, so people help do that. That uh, we'll have, we have involved. local elections too. Sorry, we have local elections this year, everybody. Right. November. And you know, mm -hmm. some other we've got the, the special. Which they can you know, still register for, even if they missed the primary. They can right. still register for the general election in November. So don't get starstruck by the by the Congress and the governors right. and all that. You've got some local leaders. I mean, there's nothing more close to the people than your council people, your mayors, and right. these people that are up for and election. And I want to say something especially to the women, especially the ones that are stay-at-home mothers. Mm -hmm. I don't think anything uh, qualifies you more for being um, involved than the experience you get as a mother. You have learned so many great skills mm -hmm. as children. Mm -hmm. And adults. Yeah, and adults <laughs> that really uh, spill over. Right. So if you right. get away from the workforce or, or whatever, um, don't think that, that that doesn't mean that you don't have something to offer right. and bring to the table. Skill level. Yes. Yeah. About 50 yes. percent of the voters, the, the people that do participate in the vote, are women. Women. There are yeah. There's like but there, there are only probably ten percent of our elected people are women. So yeah, no, they change. Yeah, they need to, they, they, there needs to be some more involvement there, but we always have room for volunteers. So if you're wondering how to get involved, please contact these at DOD. And, and we have a volunteer list, and, and if you have ideas, we're always open to ideas. Uh, we have fundraisers that um, get we together. We actually do some fun things, too. We do, yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Thank you. And I'll put the website up, okay. and, you know, you guys are tagged, and all that stuff. And so I really appreciate it. Again, thank you very much. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'm going to come around here and turn it off. Uh, and remember that, uh, remember to get involved, reach out to somebody today, whether it's uh, somebody you don't know, somebody you do know, whatever it is, it's day and nine. And your spouse. That's right. That's right. Make sure you. Don't forget it. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. And remember that uh, life is all about the bend. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Thank you.
You're welcome.